What's up, guys? Back again. Um, just myself today. I had a guest lined up, and when I tell you last minute cancellations, I mean last second cancellations. Hey, you ready to go? Yeah. No. Next week. Sure. No problem. Wasting my time. But here we are, you know, in a good mood. Good mood, good food, and all of that wonderful jazz. Guys, I'm here today to talk about one specific topic, and it will branch off into probably 50 different topics. I apologize for rambling, and I will keep this as quick as I possibly can because it's something that I'm, I'm truly relating to these days, and that is betting on yourself, investing in yourself, knowing your worth, knowing what's possible when you believe in yourself. And I, I want to give you this speech or, or fucking talk from the perspective of someone who is not on Instagram in a big suit telling working class that what they need to do with these wonderful, inspiring videos with beautiful music that will make you cry and, you know, give you a more tangible outlook as to what I'm going through in relation to this whole project. City Martial Arts Gym, CMA Podcast, and all of that wonderful stuff. Um, and I wanna, I wanna sidestep that with the fact that I'm a GSP fan now. For those who don't know who GSP is, just Google GSP. Uh, that's George St. Pierre. I think his fight name was George Rush St. Pierre, which made no sense because he never rushed anything. Um, I was not a GSP fan <clears throat> up until about a year ago, maybe even two years ago, I started to come around. Um, but more so in the last two months, I have really sat back and listened to what GSP had to say. I found out a lot of information that he gave that was back in the days where I didn't necessarily like him as a fighter. Not a, I'm not a hater. I wouldn't say I'm a GSP hater. I just was not excited to see his fights. Like I'm not a Conor McGregor fan, but who is not excited to see Conor McGregor fight, you know? And at the end of the day, we're all just here to be entertained by the fight game, right? And when I parallel the two topics that I just mentioned, like I've got a very small following on a podcast. I've got a small following on my Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I take care of the social media for the vast majority of it uh, through fa Facebook, Instagram, and uh, all the like, other platforms that we're going to branch out to once we get a space. Um, but um, like I'm, I'm under no illusions that I'm, I'm no Joe Rogan, that I'm not an established guy I'm, I'm, that I can do nothing for nobody right now. In other words, I'm not, I'm not going to get you on the podcast and all of a sudden you get 200,000 subscribers. That's not where I am right now. That's where I want to be, but that's not where I am. So I think maybe you guys can relate to me on, on this from a more realistic perspective, because as I said, I'm not a suit. I don't have millions in the bank. I'm, I'm lower, le lower, lower level and struggling to, to, to build, uh, but motivated. That's the key to all of this, motivated. It doesn't, matter, it, it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you've got the drive and motivation. And I'm investing in myself right now. I'm, I'm believing that this can be so much bigger than what it is. And myself and my partner working hard together to get the next step, which is a building that with the right contract and the right terms, that we're safe as a business in these troubling and unsettling and absolute bullshit times that we're in right now. Uh, so once we get a gym, once we sign a, a lease, like under the right terms, I have a scratchy back, I apologize. This is awful for viewing. Uh, once we get the right deal, our, our problems are in front of us, but virtually solved because we know exactly what we'll need to do from that point. And, and the reason I bring that up is because now I know what GSP was going through 
when he was fighting in the UFC in the early years. And when he lost to Matt Serra, and then when he rematched Matt Serra and won, uh, when he fought Matt Hughes, he talks about BJ Penn fight. Um, on, on a lot of podcasts, he's talking about information that at the time was super confidential contract negotiations with the UFC and he's basically outing the UFC and their absolutely horrendous but legal business tactics and for people who are not in the know I realize that this is a lot of words but stay with me and get a second device and just google fact check me whatever um GSP was fighting for very very little money even when he won the title for the first time and he talks about his renegotiation as a champion where they were trying to have him re-sign for his next fight to make thirty thousand dollars which is absolutely peanuts for a champion or for an, an established employees um, independent contractor however you'd like to to phrase it like and again I don't want to go too much into t tangents here about UFC and their business practices but they have created a business model that allows them to pay absolute peanuts because they're at the they're like the UFC is the name the face of MMA and you can either sign and take what we give you or we'll just get the next guy and there's so many people just chomping at the bit to get in there um but for gsp when he was fighting and i didn't know this i only found this out like two months ago when he was on steve o's podcast um he was talking about re-signing renegotiating his contract and he said hang on a second guys i'm i'm a champion like i should be making way more money than this and normally the ufc if you're a big name they'll get you to your last fight and before you fight your last fight they'll renegotiate your contract to like a seven or eight fight deal so i, I forget the name of the fighter he was fighting against but gsp fought out his contract and did not renegotiate the terms before his last fight on his contract so he fought it out, kept the belt, and then renegotiated based on him now being a free agent. In other words, he could just decide, okay, UFC, thank you very much. I don't want this money. I want more. If you guys cannot come up with a better deal, I'm going to go somewhere else. And they knew at that time that, they, that GSP had him because quite simply he was a huge name in canada i think it was at the bell center he fought jake shields can't remember now off the top of my head but uh it was the largest attendance for you uh, for ufc i think it was fifty five thousand people and they had like they had tightened trons over the ring because a lot of people couldn't see or the cage i don't know what that was i'll fix it later hope the seat stays intact um so he then renegotiated and got his worth he said he made his first million so he didn't give the exact figures but i think he was talking about his second last fight he made thirty thousand, and then when he renegotiated his contract as a champion he made his first million so that's a pretty hefty position to be in to, to have the to have the balls to say no i know what i'm worth i'm going to stick this out i'm going to fight my last fight and let's see what they come up with because you can't let go of a, a champion like that um maybe they can i don't know but they wanted to keep gsp and they kept gsp now at that time i was not a huge fan of gsp i i, I didn't like his fight style he wasn't a wrestler but he would out wrestle wrestlers he had a superb Superman punch. He kind of okay boxing. Um, but he would take guys down and lay on them and throw like pity pat punches for five rounds. I mean, he finished, I think he knocked out Matt Serra. Or, or no, it was a TKO, Matt Serra. Uh, 
a few years later, he, I think it was a GSP versus BJ Penn. Uh, I think BJ Penn finished the fourth round and couldn't come out for the fifth. After that, he had no finish and he retired. He stopped fighting and then he relinquished the welterweight belt and then he came back and beat Michael Bisping for the middleweight belt. And then like eight days later, gave that up, said, I don't want to do this anymore ever again. Now he was talking about um, the money he made in that fight and phenomenal money he made in that fight. And now he's talking about a charity fight with Oscar De La Hoya. UFC basically said, no, um, you're in contract with us. You, do you want to fight Khabib? Khabib had just retired and they were trying to negotiate a huge deal with Khabib meetings with him in Abu Dhabi and things like that. But that never happened. And he detailed all of that in a podcast with Ariel Harwani. I think at the MMA hours back because Ariel Harwani left um, ESPN. But yeah, super inspiring. And again, I was not a GSP fan. People were making fun of me. Pamela, friend of mine on Facebook. Um, Sean Tobin back in Ireland. All of them. Sean made me pose next to a GSP poster. For some reason, I think I, I was coming back from, I'll try and find that picture and post it on this podcast. Uh, I, I was getting back to Ireland for like a visit and I came up to the gym and he had this huge GSP poster and made me pose next to it. I'm like, all right, cool. Apologies. Um, but yeah, I, I'm a huge GSP fan now because he, as I said, bet on himself, invested in himself, believed in himself. And the reason, I'm not trying to sound like David Goggins, but I'm trying to use this platform to push a positive message. Um, right now you're seeing me in my struggling phases. You're not seeing me with a suit, with millions in the bank, talking on Instagram on a boat, talking about how much you can achieve. You have 24 hours in a day. Fight for your own fight. Be your own boss. Manage your money better. Don't stick your hand in a alligator's mouth. <laughs> What's that old dude? He's always in a like a pinstripe suit. Uh, Pena, the, the billionaire. He said, success is like pregnancy. Everybody says congratulations and no one said no one knows how much you got fucked <laughs> oh god my mother watches this podcast i'm sorry mom <laughs> i just think it's very funny please please talk to me when i call you again um but yeah the, that's the main point of this ramble today that i'm a gsp fan i've closed my mouth I've opened my ears I've listened to his story I don't necessarily agree or like with his fight style I remember I got in like a, a Twitter war with John Kavanaugh because I was like you know what did I say I think it was something along the lines of he's just gonna take him down and hold him down for five rounds and he's gonna win the championship tonight mark my words and John Kavanaugh I think came back with something like uh, it's called MMA and I'm like, thank you, John. Great contribution there. Anyway, um, yeah, I just, I'm a huge fan of GSP. I like how transparent he's being now. Obviously, in real time, it was not possible. Uh, but, you know, you can see the after effects of how these stories are affecting current fighters now. Sean O'Malley. I'm not a fan of Sean O'Malley. He's got face tattoos. He looks like an absolute dumbass. He's got those braids. I'm like, well, sir, you're not a rapper. Um, please stop doing that. Uh, you look stupid. Um, but he's coming out and he's talking about fighters getting paid their worth. And I think the whole issue is, and even Jorge Masvidal touched on this. He's like, fighters are individuals and it would take all of these individuals coming together um 
to unionize, but that's never, ever, ever going to happen. If it, if it does happen, it's going to happen in the next, after the next 20 years. But these people are, are starting to become more vocal now in real time. And I think uh, we wouldn't see the GSP of today if it was in real time. All of this stuff coming out now has changed me as a, a GSP. I don't want to say GSP hater, but I was not a fan of GSP and now I am. I love listening to him. I love listening to how transparent he is and how how much shit that he went through to get to where he is now. An absolute millionaire better than himself. Am I doing that with a gym and a podcast? I don't know, but it's happening right now. It's happening in real time. And our goal is to believe in ourselves, believe in our product, believe in our service, advertise correctly, get people into the gym, bet on ourselves, believe in ourselves. And I want to tell you, you believe in yourself. Believe in your goals. Work on your goals. Don't spend the rest of your evening when you get home from work doing nothing, watching Netflix. They're all distractions. Not one episode of Game of Thrones have I ever watched. And a lot of my friends who are doing nothing with their lives now continue to talk about Game of Thrones. Put away Netflix. Put away all that crap. What do you like? What do you enjoy? Are you willing to bet on yourself? Invest in yourself. That's what I'm doing right now. I got a camera and a microphone and a laptop and a gym and a desire to succeed. Goals to succeed. Motivation. And it all stems from knowledge I've taken from transparent fighters like GSP. I think that's what's wrong with the world nowadays. Not enough people listening. Too many people talking as he speaks into a microphone. I don't know. I don't want to spend too much time rambling, but if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments. Tell me what you're thinking. Um, tell me what I can improve. Tell me how I can do this faster. If there's anybody that wants their company sponsored, excuse me, if there's anybody that wants this platform to shout from the rooftops your company, your product, your service. We will accept your sponsorship money. In turn, I will talk wonderfully about your company, but it will have to be genuine. I'm not gonna talk about a piece of shit company that I don't believe in. So I'm leaving it now. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, subscribe. I'm not gonna keep rambling on that, but that's all I ask, that you subscribe. Gone. Thank you very much. Rock and roll. That was not an intentional door slam.